SLS at home? Well, Micronics is making it possible. Also, the people that make your pew pew go pew now can make your CNC go burr. In today's video from Open Sauce 2024, let's get started. So I'm here with uh, Luke here from Micronics here at Open Sauce, and they're working on bringing at home SLS printing to the masses. And uh, this machine's pretty cool. So Luke, what do we got here? We're bringing the world the first desktop SLS 3D printer. So for those who are unfamiliar with the SLS process, we're using a high powered laser to fuse plastic powder together to make your end use parts. And this right here is the machine itself, right? And it, what is it called? The Micron, you so said? So we call it, this is Micron, right. So what is SLS? So SLS uses a powdered plastic and will lay thin layers of powder and then scan a cross section of your part with a high powered laser to selectively fuse together parts of your print. The beauty of the process is that with the unfused powder, it can support parts being printed above it. So you can print in the entire volume without any supports. So something like this is actually printable using our technology. So there's no support required at all? No support required at all. And that lets you do print in place things like this gear mechanism. And there's also like our, of course, this cube. You've probably seen this a million times, but these print in place things. And this whole thing is one. It's This is piece. also like one Rubik's cube, right? That is really cool. You can see like the, the lattice structures there. And now, um, since it's gonna be like resin, you're not gonna be able to use infill, right? Everything's solid? Everything is solid, yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, what kind of use cases? Like why? who would want this machine? Like? Sure, we love to say that this is like professional quality. So engineering departments, people who wanna make um, professional products, things without layer lines that don't look 3D printed. And what material are all these? Are these all nylon? So all of these are nylon 12. Okay. Good chemical resistance, strength, all around just a good well-rounded material. And can you do other materials on this? So other materials we're supporting are like nylon composites, like glass filled nylon, carbon fiber filled nylon. Um, and we're also going to support TPU, which is like a flexible material. Metal by chance? Uh, is that not, not no, no, metal in no, this no, machine? No, no, no metal, okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're sticking with plastics. Um, now with this process, you're using powdered nylon. Are safety concerns part of the process, I'm assuming? Yes, so the biggest concern is inhaling the dust. So the powder itself is non-toxic, but if you inhale dust, it can be uncomfortable. Yeah, so you don't we, want to get the black lung. <laughs> we, no, 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 no. Leave that to like other things in the environment. Yeah, so we integrate a HEPA filter and carbon filter to filter out any fumes and dust generated in the printing process. So the machine is fully sealed during operation. That's right. And then our, our powder is all contained within the build unit. Okay, so this gets inserted into the machine. Can I open the door here? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, I see. So this is the machine itself. You got the filter in the back, uh, laser up top there and all that. And so you fill this with the powder and you put that in the machine. Is that how it works? That's exactly. Okay. Right. And then once you're done with the print, we have these tools to extract the what we call a powder cake. Okay. And then we put that in our sifting bin here. Okay. And that comes with this extractor that creates a draft to suck up any dust that's generated in the transfer. Okay. Um, is there any post-processing that's required, like a media blast or anything yes, like that? Yes, we absolutely recommend a sandblaster, but just glass beads okay. to post-process these parts. Not only does it give it a really nice surface finish, but it's a massive time saver. For cleaning up all the little bits. For getting stuff. all the loose powder off the yeah. parts. Yeah, because you're, you got some pretty well detailed parts here and you're gonna have like little bits of leftover plastic stuck in there you're gonna have to clean out. Right, right. That's really cool. So if somebody wants to know more, where can they find you? My, in Micronics3D.com? We're at Micronics3D on like every social media platform. Um, right now we just went live on Kickstarter as Yeah, well. so this machine is a Kickstarter right now. And when will it be available? You're aiming for next year, you said? So we're gonna, we're budgeting ourselves eight to 12 months to deliver the units from Kickstarter. Okay. And then after that, we'll open up a regular retail channel. Awesome. And do you have a bomb or a list price yet, or the price would be yep. on the Kickstarter? Retail, four thousand five hundred on okay. Kickstarter, thirty six ninety nine. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Cheers. Yeah, of course. Yeah.
So I'm here with Light Burn, the Pew Pew folks, or the stuff that makes your Pew Pew go. <laughs> yes. But now they have something to make your burr go burr. 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 Something. I don't know. It's called Mill Mate. What is it? All right. So if you've used Lightburn in the past to control your lasers and you've said, man, I have a CNC router, but I really wish there was easier software that was like Lightburn, and now we have Millmage. So what is Millmage? Is it basically Lightburn for CNC? It's basically Mil Lightburn for CNC, yes. It's design, programming, and control software for CNC routers. So if you, we have our familiar design interface that we've always had in Lightburn, uh, really powerful text editing tools um, and just project generation tools. But now we have the ability to control a Z axis and do two and a half D machining. So pocketing, profiling, drilling. Uh, we do uh, some advanced rest pocketing um, and all of that. And we're able to send the project to a serial based uh, CNC router, like any machine that's controlled by something like Gerbil, Duet, or like RRF or something like that, we're able to directly control. Oh, um, nice. Because that's the big hurdle with CNC is, for those coming from like a laser or a 3D printer background, it's the CAM software. Yeah. It is, it is big, it is nowhere near as easy to get into as a slicer, for example. Right, yes. So the goal here is basically to make CNC more accessible. Yes. Uh, we've taken some steps out of the process and traditional CAM software, you'll have to like save the file out as a G code and then move it over to your control software. Uh, for this, we don't have to uh, save out. We can just click start once the project's ready and it goes. If we need to make any changes to our files, um, our changes are automatically live after they're made in the design. Uh, so you can just make your change and hit go again. Um, and then if you have a more advanced CNC router, something that uses something like uh, Mach 4 or UC CNC or Linux CNC, uh, we also are able to create G-code for those machines as well. Oh, so nice. we're not, if you have a more advanced router, you're still more than powerful enough to control it and uh, make code and make your projects really fast and easy. So for those that have used Lightburn in the past, the transition over to Millmade should be the, the UI looks very similar here. Very similar. And you still have all the features where you can like just create text right yep. on the go. You don't have to pull in SVGs. It's just very user friendly. Yeah. Is it compatible though with CAD, like an yep. STL? It is? Uh, not, not, not 3D CAD. So we can bring in uh, SVGs, DXFs, AI files, PDFs, uh, anything that's 2D. Okay, uh, so this is more for routing and engraving than yeah. actual mill work, though. Yeah. But yeah, it's called so, Mill Mage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, is that something in the works down the line, maybe? Maybe. Um, we, are, we are currently working on V-carving. Um, we're hoping to add in 3D profiling at some point. Okay. Um, but right now, we're really just focused on really good 2.5D machining um, at an accessible price point and uh, making that, that transition from lasers to CNC just as easy as possible. Okay. So for those that have like an MP CNC or a little desktop router CNC, yeah. this would be Shape perfect Ocos, for that. x carves, all that stuff we'll be able to control. And um, one of the really cool things is if you're an existing Lightburn user, uh, Millmage can open Lightburn projects. Lightburn can open Millmage projects. Oh, nice. So there's some interoperability there. Um, and we're hoping to have some uh, kind of hybrid capabilities. So if you've got a laser diode on your Shapeoko, they'll be able to, to control all of that through one software and not have to like kind of do the dance that you have to do right now. Oh, awesome. And is this software available yet or is it still in a beta or? It, uh, we're, we're still working on getting into an open beta phase. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna give you a timeline because the last two timelines we gave, they just went <laughs> Okay, when, <laughs> when it's done. Yeah, it's gonna be done when it's ready. Okay. And when it's great. So uh, yeah, we're really excited about it. Um, I am a CNC nerd. Long before I got into 3D printing, long before yep. I got into laser cutting, I was building CNC routers. So making routing accessible is something that I'm really excited about. Cool. So that is the Mill Mage with Lightburn. Awesome.